Hey everybody. So I've looked out on the internet and there haven't been a lot of videos going over the Sky Beacon installation. There's been a few that have been uh, real limited information on the install process. So I figured that when I got mine, I wanted to go ahead and make a video to maybe answer some questions to show everybody how to install the Sky Beacon and to see if it really is as straightforward and easy as they've been touting. So I ordered mine on January 10th and I got mine just a couple of days ago. Uh, that would have been on the uh, 16th of February. They say they're running about a four to six week lag right now. But it came, small box, and I'm gonna go ahead and slap it on and see if we can uh, get it installed and do the test flight today and see how quickly it really goes. So it comes in a pretty small box. Get it uh, opened up and I'll show you what comes inside of it. The box is actually quite a bit smaller than I thought it would be, but I guess there's really not that much. That's just a packing invoice. And they've got a couple of uh, couple of pieces of paper here that has your Wi-Fi password on it for the unit. It's got a small package with the screws and the O-rings in it and the connectors. And then the unit itself. Pretty straightforward. Three wires. It's got a rubber backing on it. It says in the instructions to not use any more sealant around the wires because that is where the uh, pressure equalization is for the altimeter. Okay, the first step after you get all the tools out that you're going to need, which isn't a lot, you need a Phillips screwdriver some wire cutters and uh, some wire strippers and then something to crimp the connector with. The uh, nav light has a little shield on it. One little screw out here that removes this outer shield. We'll go ahead and take it off. By the way, it's about 1130 now that I'm starting. You'll see inside you've got three screws in here that holds this nav light on. You can go on to UAvionics website and print out a template for the Sky Beacon and then come and see to make sure that it actually is the same hole pattern that you have. This one is, I knew that before I bought it, and it's just three screws. Hold this on, so we'll pull these out. And then once you get the screws out. Tiny little things. The light just comes out and it's got a small screw on connector. Two wires, one is to the ground, one is your power. Unscrew that, light falls away, power goes to the end of it, and the ground goes to this little ring right here that it's soldered onto. Now I'm going to grab some tape and I'm going to mark these for power and ground um, just so that I don't get them crossed up before I cut them. Okay, now that I've got the wires labeled ground and power, I'm ready to cut the old connector off of there. So I'm gonna get down in here, trying to preserve as much of this wire as I can in case I need it down the road for some reason. So I'm gonna dike this one here, slide off the rest of the connector there, and then I'm gonna dike off the ground just above the little ring that was in there. Like I mentioned, they give you the connectors that are in here, so just get the connector out. You get a connector hooked up to both of those. Now, I don't have a separate switch for the strobe lights. I wish I did. It's not a perfect scenario. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up 
putting both power for the strobe and for the um, nav light um, into one connector so that it'll run off the same switch. Ideally, you'd have, a, a, if your aircraft's equipped with strobe lights, you'd have a separate power source coming out for the strobe lights. You can turn the strobe on and off, but only within five minutes after um, you've powered it up, and then the Wi-Fi will turn off. So if you want to turn strobes off, if for whatever reason, you can do it via the app. But uh, that's going to be my only option. I could have tapped it into the wing light, but then there's situations I can see where I would want the wing lights on, um, like during taxi, and but I wouldn't want to be strobes uh, have the strobes on at night. Um, luckily, I don't do a lot of night flying, so um, it is what it is. It's easy to access both of these. If I decide to change it down the road, I will, but for the time being, I'm just going to put uh, both the strobe and the power to the uh, to the ADSB and the red nav light in the same uh, connector. And I checked with the Uavionics, and then they said that's fine to do. So we're going to get this on and we'll get it crimped. I'm seeing that these holes are awfully small in here and this is kind of a, a larger gauge wire so this might take me a few minutes to get to get hooked up. Okay, so I've got the connectors put on to power and ground. I've got the red and the yellow wire pull the, they've already pre-cut and they're ready to just pull off so that your ends are stripped. And then like I said, I'm going to put both of these into the power supply. Um, I've, luckily it's got a really long lead on it off of the unit so that I can leave it sitting up on top of the wing while I'm doing this. So I'm going to twist those together. I don't know if that's the smartest idea, but I think just to make it easier to get them both in the hole. Yep, they went right in. Okay, so get my crimper here. does have the protective uh, covering on the connectors. I may throw some either electrical tape or some uh, shrink uh, wrap stuff around them just to make them a little more um, waterproof or from the elements or whatnot. Um, but I'll do that after I power it up and make sure that everything's working uh, before I actually install it. All right, power is on and here will be the moment of truth to see if everything's working. All right, we have power and we have a strobe. So that is very good and it's bright. And they say to wear sunglasses, so don't look directly at it. All right, so with that, I'm ready to mount it and run the setup app. Okay, so I've got everything connected, everything sealed up. I'm gonna tuck the wires Back inside, I also cleaned up the part here where that rubber is going to need to make a seal. Made sure it was nice and clean. Tuck these wires back up in. And then it is ready to be screwed on. Now, like I said, the instructions say there are a bunch of O-rings in here and there needs to be two O-rings put on. And if you tighten them down and then take them off, the outer O-ring has to be replaced. So, got two O-rings 
and they're ready to go on. I'm not going to tighten them down, I'm just going to get them started. snug fit so it would definitely be a possibility to to end up pinching one of them and cutting them in two while you're getting the screw started so be aware of that okay I think I've got that one seated the other two went in really easily this one being just a little bit more temperamental It is it's on it took me a little bit longer than 10 minutes but it was wired in 10 and then with all the running around and having to find some uh, tools that I needed and that it ended up being 20 minutes so not too bad okay now that I've gotten the sky beacon mounted I'm going to go ahead and get the app fired up and go through the setup process. Once you've got the beacon turned on, the first step to configure the beacon using the app is to come into your settings on your phone, go to your Wi-Fi settings, and you'll see that the beacon will show up as one of the Wi-Fi one of the Wi-Fi signals that's available for you to connect your phone to. I've already entered my password and username that was provided to me with the paperwork that came with the beacon and so it's already connected to the beacon. Once it's connected we'll go to the app which I've already loaded onto the, my phone and we'll want to come to the configure button. This allows you under the basic to uh, use either anonymous mode which we're not going to do right now and then to configure your call sign which we will want to make sure is your tell number. So we'll put that in. And then it's going to ask you to confirm that the ICAO number is correct for your tell number that you've entered. Now you can do this by going to the FAA's registry uh, website and putting in your tell number you'll see a, an ICAO number come up and so that way you can validate that that is the same number. I've validated that it is correct so I'm going to confirm it. Then you'll need to enter your VSO in knots. Mine's roughly 48 with the VGs on it that I have and so I'm going to leave that there. And then my ADSB in and out uh, in capability is both 1090 and 978. So with that I'm going to update it. You'll see that it says Sky Beacon configured. Then we're going to come to the Advanced tab and here you can choose to either have your position lights turned on or off um, permanently and we'll leave mine selected on for the time being. And it auto populated the emitter type, the aircraft length, and the aircraft width. And I've gone in and I've looked, and based on my aircraft, which is a Cessna 205, those are correct with the lengths and widths that I got out of the POH. Down here, it's going to ask you for the lateral offset of the beacon, its position, from the center of the aircraft to the tip of the wing and left six meters is correct for mine and it wants to know how far back it is from the nose of the aircraft and aft two meters is correct for mine. So with that, we'll update that. It says Sky Beacon is configured. And with that, we should be ready to go do a test flight. Airplane outside and I'm now just waiting for it to acquire. You can see the flashing red light. 
and that should be saying that it's not yet acquired. So once it goes off, then we'll do the monitor test and then be on our way for the test flight. All right, it took about two minutes for it to acquire and I checked the lat long and it agrees with where I'm currently at. Status is okay. So with that, we're gonna go do the test flight. So I just finished the test flight and uh, did all the maneuvers. Now I'll wait for a little bit and then submit my request for them to send me the report to see whether or not it passed or not. And then that'll be it. From the time that I started to the time that I finished was four hours. And that included a lot of running around the hangar looking for stuff that I wasn't sure where it was, electrical tape and my, my uh, wire strippers and pulling the planes in and out and dealing with the camera setup and that. So you can do it in a lot less, but four hours start to finish. Easy, no surprises. I'm pretty happy with it. Hope this is helpful and uh, thanks for watching.